I'm very happy to um, to share with all of you uh, our experiences with the implementation of Mommy Care Pathway in South Sudan, but um, especially on the aspect of maternal mental health. And I'm, I'm yeah, I'm very wondering uh, about the discussion afterwards also because we're also facing some challenges and I think uh, it will be great to hear um, each of your experiences also towards maternal mental health. So this is our implementation plan for uh, the mommy pilot in South Sudan. Um, we, we've got the preparation and the RB approval. So the next thing is to start with the stakeholder meeting and orientation meeting. Um, we hope everything will start in July. We, we had some complications um, and the whole process is delayed a little bit. But important to tell is that in all of these steps, um, the maternal mental health aspect is, is very important to take it in all of the steps, also in the stakeholder meeting um, and discuss this also with the orientation meeting where we have uh, healthcare workers and uh, the people who will actually use the screening forms. Um, why, is it, why is maternal mental health uh, very important, especially also in the in the mommy care pathway. Um, the aim of the whole maternal mental health assessment is to early detect maternal mental health issues and to provide provide psychosocial support and and start treatment or referral very early in the stage. Um, also to create awareness for maternal mental health issues. Um, especially in places where now the, the awareness is very low for mental health uh, in general. Why we want to do this is uh, because feelings of depression, anxiety, um, also emotional stress uh, affect the success of exclusive breastfeeding and also uh, the adequate infant care. Uh, also, mothers with depressive symptoms have a 50% higher risk of having a stunted or underweighted child. And malnutrition or nutritional defi deficiencies lead to maternal mental health disorders. So this is like a vicious circle and it's difficult to, 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 yeah, to come out of the, of, of the vicious circle. In this table, um, I, I wanted to see what's in the mommy care pathway uh, version 3 and what uh, a, a potential adaptation of the maternal mental health assessment would be. Um, because what, what's the problem with the maternal, uh, with the screening forms in the version 2 is that it's only screening for depression. Um, and, and anxiety is also a, a very big part of, of, of the process. So therefore we wanted to see also how we could do uh, depression and anxiety. Um, both are using a step screening protocol. Uh, the version three is using the patient health questionnaire and a further assessment is needed uh, because of the severity of the depression, the patient health questionnaire uh, nine is used. Um, we looked to another basic assessment um, for the depression. You could use the Woolley questionnaire. Uh, for the anxiety part, we could use the generalized anxiety disorder too. Also there, um, if further assessment is needed, uh, the severity of depression and other psychiatric disorders could be uh, assessed by the Edinburgh Postlate Depression Scale. Uh, with this adaptation, uh, the whole process would be more sensitive, yeah, in the uh, but also uh, it could make an easier decision in, in treatment process. Um, here you can see a little bit in a, in a flow chart uh, how the MOMI version 3 screening tool is used. And in the next part, 
you could see the screening tool um, with, it, uh, with the adaptation. Um, I will describe further why we use the Wooly questionnaire instead of the patient health questionnaire. Um, with this adapted screening tool, but also I think with the, with the other screening tool, um, it could reduce the number of women who need more extensive screening by 50%. Why we would use the, the Wooly questionnaire is to quicker assessment of, of depression. Um, it's also a little bit easy to administer because you have two questions and the two questions are actually the same as the patient health questionnaire, but they only need to uh, fill in yes or no. Uh, also, um, the time frame is one month versus two weeks in the patient health questionnaire. Uh, which yeah is better to 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 screen uh, bothers uh, for the last month. In uh, the CAT two questionnaire, um, it's also two questions. Uh, here you you have uh, not a yes no, but it, it's a multiple choice questionnaire. Um, but it gives also a good sensitivity uh, for most common anxiety disorders. And then after these two screening uh, for the more severity uh, uh, and in the, in the identification of patients at risk for perinatal depression, but also for other psychiatric disorders, uh, the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale could be used. Um, it's a 10 question questionnaire um, and three of these questions also using, uh, also measuring the anxiety. But of course, um, yeah, also for us, it's, it's very challenging um, to, to implement the maternal mental health. Uh, we also have a lot of questions. Uh, a first question is, what's the, sens the, the sensitivity, uh, the relevance for use of this tool in low and middle income countries? Uh, but also, is this tool better than, than, than the current tool in the version 3? Is it worth changing? Um, um, yeah, I think uh, we can learn from, from a pilot project, project maybe, uh, but we also have other concerns like uh, training healthcare workers in, in, in screening and assessments, but also yeah, we screen and we assess, but then what further, uh, what is the treatment procedure? Um, and for us, for, for South Sudan, we thought actually to use uh, the examples from the Maternal Health Gap Action Program. Um, it, it's a really basic, um, be really basic treatment uh, where healthcare workers can, can learn in short time um, to give, yeah, psychoeducation, also to reduce stress, uh, to strengthen social support, because it's also important uh, that we don't forget the family, that we don't forget the partners, the children. Um, this could be by relaxation techniques, by, by talking sessions, also the promotion of functioning and daily activities, and, to, uh, and also to give psychosocial treatment um, I think like, like the um, treatment of pharmacological interventions uh, will be more in, in a referral center where, where, where doctors and, and healthcare workers are especially trained to give pharmacological interventions. Um, so that, that's the thing that we are still struggling and that we still face um, as a challenge to, to yeah, the good implementation of a treatment afterwards, actually. Yeah. So with this, I, I, I want to end my, uh, my presentation. Um, I hope uh, that you all had something with, with this presentation and, and, and I'm very happy to hear your experiences and your challenges uh, or opinions about this as well. Thank you very much.